Deuteronomy 11, verse 16. Take heed to yourselves, that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside, and serve other gods, and worship them. 2 Timothy 3, verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Let's take a look at one of them. Well, welcome today to a special feature that we call Asked and Answered. And in this feature, we take questions that are commonly asked or specifically ask at times to me or someone else on staff here and we seek to go into the scripture and say okay what about that what does the bible say you ask now we want to answer well this today is one of the most controversial and diversive dividing so much throughout history questions that we could take and that is once saved always saved and that's a question. If once you're saved, are you always saved? Another way of putting it would be the doctrine of eternal security, which grows out of Calvinism, a whole system of theology. And the opposite view of that is called Arminianism, which uh, emphasizes the free will of man. All right, first and of all, so, so he's framing the argument... That uh, well, on one side you got uh, Calvinist, and on the other side you got Arminianist. You know, it's like the right wing, left wing. I'm telling you, stay away from those types of whirlwinds. Uh, don't let people frame uh, those sorts of straw man arguments. Now, first of all, let me show this here. Matthew 12 verse 51. Jesus says, "Suppose ye that I have come to give peace on earth." I tell you nay, but rather division. All right, and so look, this is it is a divisive issue. It's be it's an issue between who's saved and who's not saved. All right, and this is critical that you understand the difference. You know whether you're saved or not. I don't know, but what you preach is important. What you are telling unsaved people is absolutely critical you want to get the gospel right Matthew 7 verse 21 not everyone that saith unto me Lord Lord shall enter into the kingdom of heaven but he that doeth the will of my father which is in heaven and the will of the father is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work in equity. All right. Now there's three things mentioned here. Have we not prophesied? Have we not cast out devils? And in your name done many wonderful works? None of these three are sins. These are all good things. The difference is that these people were believing that they were a good person, and because they're a good person, they're going to be saved. You're not a good person. He has concluded all under sin. All right, we all come short of the glory of God. Now, and again, and then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. These guys were never saved. All right, so let's continue. We see there is a, a, a dividing line here. Now, even though it's very clear, this is an incredibly important topic. I can't think of too many topics that are more important. Uh, it should not be divisive. I think there's room in the body of Christ here. Uh, for differing opinions, although I do think it does affect how we pray for people, how we counsel. Uh, there is no, there is no room for difference of opinion. It's either the gospel or it's not the gospel. and reach out to people, and so I do think that it is a great and reach out. To it does affect how we pray for people, how we counsel, and how we cast out devils how we prophesy 
and how we do many wonderful works. Reach out to people, and so I do think that it is of great importance. Now, uh, let me just set it up, and I, and, and I stated the two opposite extremes. One extreme says, once you say that prayer... Hey, I, don't, I don't know no, enough about Calvinism, but from what I understand, they do, there are some that do not teach uh, once saved, always saved. I, you know, in the whole thing about Calvin, look... Nothing. No, I didn't mean calling. Nothing. Nothing. It's not there. Neither is that other fella. So why are you framing this according to, you know, this question of the gospel of Jesus Christ, salvation? Why are you framing that on two men that are not even mentioned in the Bible? Prayer, inviting Jesus in your heart, confessing him as Lord. No matter what happens the rest of your life, you'll never lose your salvation. You're going to heaven no matter what. Well, that's well, that's what the Bible says over and over and over again. All right, so I'll keep this short. You know, uh, John three verse sixteen: For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life all right and um let's see uh, let's go to um i'm gonna do i'm gonna do this here i'm gonna go um i'm gonna try to spell this Whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And then, of course, um, you are sealed until the day of redemption, eternal security, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And of course, uh, oops, am I doing this right? For grace are ye saved through faith. For by grace are ye saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. So what are you going to do to stay safe, man? You weren't, you weren't saved because of yourself. You're not going to stay saved because of yourself. It is the gift of God. And of course, also, I mean, you have to, I wonder, do people even read the Bible sometimes? I really wonder that because this is so blatantly obvious. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. For in Christ Jesus neither <clears throat> excuse me, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And if we can go back to John three, you know, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. When you are born of the Spirit of God, you have Jesus in you, and you can never die. And one more verse here. I'm just I mean I could do this all day, couldn't I? Go to Revelation 20. Blessed and holy is he that takes part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. Once saved, always saved. And as Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, uh oh. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth on me. Though you were dead, yet shall you live. You're never going to die. Once you are born of God, you have eternal security. I mean, the, the whole, just from a logical standpoint, having everlasting life means it's life that lasts forever. And being saved is, you're not, you know, you can't be saved if you could lose your salvation. So you're not truly saved. So if you're truly saved, you can never lose 
your salvation. Otherwise, you're not saved. It's just a matter of logic. Simple logic, okay? Now, if you want to send this guy some money, I'm sure he'd be happy. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. And we call that, I call that at least, absolute security. In other words, once you receive Christ... That's the only kind of security. I, if I have to do it myself, man, I'm doomed. And so are you. You are absolutely saved no matter what happens or no matter what you do the rest of your life. Well, someone comes along and says, well, what about somebody who's living an openly sinful lifestyle? Well, you're not openly sinful yourself. Hmm? See, this is what happens when you believe you're good. You're a good person. You're righteous. Well, I do good. I, you know, I, um, you know, I cast out devils. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, and I do many wonderful works. I'm a good person. And this is what happens when you are in that uh, attitude. You think, oh, what about these people? You know, these people are sinners. As if you're not a sinner. As if you're above them. As if you're holier than them. And uh, you're in a bad place, man, I'm telling you. Once saved, always saved side of the issue says, well, then they were probably never really saved in the first place. Well, that's, that's another straw man argument. So if somebody's going out there and, and they're saved, if they're truly saved and they go out there and they kill a bunch of people, they're not losing their salvation. Uh, you know, the, and salvation was never about the law. The law was there as our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Christ. Now once faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. Now the issue with sin, yes, it's wrong to sin. It's never okay to sin. But uh, sin is not a mat it's not a is it's not a matter of salvation because we're all and we're, God has concluded us all under sin, and Jesus has paid the price. He has bought us, and so all we have to do is believe. Okay. I have a little bit of difficulty with that to stand because how would anybody have any assurance? Well, anyway, here's what I want to do today. There are. Well. That doesn't make any sense. So he says that somebody is saved and they, and they go out and live a sinful lifestyle. And then they were n never saved. If they were never saved, then how could they ever have assurance? So that's a, about the dumbest argument I've ever heard. There are three different stands that we could take on this. And I take the third one. And it's uh, one that there's a phrase I'm going to use. Wait. <laughs> no, there's one way to heaven let's go let's go come on where's this at I'm not sure no of course not I, no you know what I did I almost had it I almost had it almost had it Straight is the gate, and <clears throat> excuse me, straight is the gate and narrows the way which leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. So weren't we just in Matthew 7? Yeah. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few be there that find it. There's just one way, and it's believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not, listen. News that I hadn't heard before I read it in a book by a man by the name Shank. And here's the three positions. See, I did, you hear, the third. did you hear that? Listen to him. And it's uh, one that, there's a phrase I'm going to use that I hadn't heard before I read it in a book by a man by the name Shank. And here's the three positions. I, so, I take he's not getting this from the Bible. He's getting this from a man named Shank. Uh, somebody he was in prison with, I think. The third one. And it's uh, one that there's a phrase I'm going to use that 
I hadn't heard before I read it in a book by a man by the name of Shank. And here's the three positions. There is absolute security. Uh, there is no security, number two. What? No security. No security at all. Uh, I wonder who that might, who's teaching that. And then there's what I'm going to call conditional security. And what I want to do is give you a couple of the passages that are used on each side of these arguments and make some comments on them. And yeah, yeah, of course, you're going to brainwash and deceive. I'll share with you why. I and uh, just like what we read here, in the last days, men... Um, what is that phrase? Is it the love of many shall wax worse and worse? Or no, it's but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse. Deceiving and being deceived. Okay, there's no assurance at all if you could lose your salvation. You're in trouble and you're going to screw it up. Just, we've got example after example. Adam and Eve, they screwed it up. The people in the days of Noah lived hundreds of years. And they screwed it up big time. And then we see uh, that just example after example in the, in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, even, you know, Peter screwed it up. <laughs> I mean... Um, just example after example of people screwing up. And the one example I want to give is, let's say that you have a, what do you call that, a stroke. Let's say you're saved, but you were, you've only been saved for a short time. You've been saved for, let's say, six months. But then you have a stroke, and now your brain's kind of in a mess, and you're you go back to a time before you were saved and you're thinking it's still 10 years ago and that happens <clears throat> I've seen it happen and uh, that absolutely does happen it's strange no question about it but what are you gonna say well those people if they would have died instead of living through their stroke they would have been saved but because they went back to a time in their mind before they were saved then they lost their salvation that so what you're saying is salvation is dependent on you and that goes back to you know what Jesus says not everybody that calleth on me or not everybody that saith Lord Lord is because these people are depending on their own works to save them and they're not putting their full 100% trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. It's cut and dry. And it's that simple. You either trust the Lord Jesus Christ or you don't.